A bunch of news items for you today, including a World of Outlaws full-timer additions, a new open wheel team from a NASCAR driver, and more. Let's go. It's Monday, January 23rd. I'm Justin Fiedler. This is Dirt Tracker Daily. Back on Friday, while I was already in the midst of uploading that day's show, we had a few drivers commit full-time to the World of Outlaws Sprint Car Series for 2023. So I wanted to kick things off today by doubling back to that news. The first announcement to drop was for Casey Kane. We'll join KKR teammate Brad Sweet out on the road full-time this year. Kane attempted to go full-time last season, but several crashes through the year slowed his rookie run down, and he eventually had to miss 27 races recovering from injuries. There were some bright spots, though, in the 44 appearances he did make with the Outlaws, including leading laps and finishing on the podium at Husets in June and a top five at Eldora in July. Kane's team will be crew chiefed by Justin Adams, who had spent time in the previous two seasons working on James McFadden's car. He is still seeking his first ever World of Outlaws win, which is crazy to think about giving all of the winning that Kane has done in his career at other levels. And he's also made nearly 200 appearances with the Outlaws. Overall, Kane has five top fives and 33 top tens in his Outlaw career and does have six all-star victories on his resume. The last one of those, though, coming in 2003. And not long after Kane was announced, KCP Racing also dropped the news that they will join the Outlaws for a full-time run with driver Geo Selzy. KCP had previously been on the road with the Outlaws with driver Ian Madsen, but this will be the rookie year for Geo. Shouldn't be a massive transition, though, for either KCP or Geo, as they have run packed sprint car schedules the previous few years, which included 49 Outlaw races in 2021 and 46 in 2022. Since 2018, Gio has 168 Outlaw appearances. He's got five victories, 32 top fives, and 84 top tens. His two Outlaw wins a year ago were at Tulare and Bakersfield in March. And KCP was full-time with Madsen in 2018 and 2019, finishing eighth in the standings both years. They did pick up a couple of wins along the way as well. I do expect Gio to be a regular contender for victories, and I think he should be in the mix and that maybe top six to top eight in points by year's end. The squad was one of the, you know, kind of two that I had heard were considering going out with the Outlaws, so obviously this confirms that. The other team that I had heard was considering, and we've talked about this before, but Tyler Courtney and Clausen Marshall. But it sounds now like they may run the All-Stars for another season, so not a rookie run with the uh, Word of Outlaws. I was going to be all in on this kind of Sunshine versus Geo rookie battle, but it doesn't appear as though we will get that. So here's the list of confirmed full-time teams right now with the Outlaws. It includes Brad Sweet. Casey Kane, Gio Selzy, Logan Schuhart, Jacob Allen, Brock Zierfoss, who just recently confirmed that he's back for another season, Noah Gass, Bill Rose, Robbie Price, and James McFadden. That's 10 so far. We've heard nothing official from David Gravel, Carson Macedo, Donnie Schatz, Sheldon Hoddenshield, Spencer Basin, or Craig Kinzer. At this point, though, with what I'm hearing, I don't know that I'd expect any defections from that group. I think it's highly likely we start the year with 16, which would be everyone from last year, including Casey Kane, and the addition of Geo Selzy. I don't think we'll have any of these top teams, at least in the beginning, uh, not run the series. At the, you know, at the very least, they'll start the year and then see what happens. We're still a little bit more than two weeks away from the season opener down at Volusia, so there is still some time for teams to uh, make announcements or decisions. There have been a few other sprint car news items over the past few days as well. First, Christopher Bell is partnering up with his father-in-law, Brian Kemenaw, to start a new team. They're calling it Bell Kemenaw Racing. They're going to campaign micros and sprint cars for drivers Gavin Bochelle, Jaden Bowling, and Colin Hutchison. And we'll see this new team as soon as this coming weekend down at Volusia, as Bochelle will be in action in the sprint car against the USCS at the Southern Sprint Car Shootout. Don't expect Bochelle at any big 410 shows this year as he's still too young to compete with any of the bigger series. Looking at his website, though, it does look like we'll see him at a number of these USC events into the spring, along with racing at Micridge, uh, Micridge, at Millbridge in the micro uh, and in a pro late model on pavement. And unless they've flipped in recent days, I don't think you'll see Bell in that sprint car either as his NASCAR team in Joe Gibbs Racing has apparently put the kibosh on any of his dirt schedule. Brian Kemenaw, while also being Bell's father-in-law, is also a very accomplished sprint car crew chief, including leading Chad Kemenaw and Tim Schaefer to all-star titles and crew chiefing Schaefer to that Knoxville Nationals title in 2010. Elsewhere, with the departure of J.J. Hickel, who is headed to run the ceiling car in Ohio, Brandon Eikenberry's team was without a driver, but we found out just today that Aussie driver Lachlan McHugh is joining that group for something like 50 races this season. 
that should mean a healthy dose of Knoxville Weekly, uh, probably some Houston shows and some other uh, Midwest National Series shows as well. You think about when the Outlaws come through. And fresh off his rookie run in a USAC midget with Chad Boat, Mitchell Moles will compete full-time in 2023 in the Reinbold Underwood non-wing sprint car. They'll chase the USAC National Sprint Car points with that season starting in a few weeks down in Florida as well. Speaking of Florida, down at Volusia over the weekend, we only got one of the final two nights completed for the Ward of Outlaws Late Model Series opening event. They raced Friday, but Saturday was lost to weather. Friday's show, though, was a repeat of Thursday with Devin Moran starting third and eventually winning. Ricky Thornton Jr. and Nick Hoffman led that Friday feature early on, but Moran roared up from third to take the lead on lap eight and then wasn't challenged again out front. He topped Tim McCready and RTJ, who was also on the podium. I was impressed, though, with Hoffman leading laps. Uh, that uh, NOS number nine was definitely fast, and I would expect that to kind of be, you know, pretty common for him this season. I, you know, I was excited to see him get in that car, and I think he's going to do well all year. With just the two race nights complete, Chris Madden currently leads the way too early point standings over Nick Hoffman and Brian Shirley. We won't see the Outlaws again until they return to Volusia on February 16th. But there's plenty of other late model racing coming up with Lucas getting started later this week at Golden Isles. A couple of other notes from Volusia. The Big Fog car uh, ended up having three drivers in two nights. Scott Bloomquist was supposed to run it all weekend. He ran Thursday, ended up fourth in a B main, uh, didn't race in the night's feature, and then we didn't see him again on Friday. Chris Ferguson climbed into that car on Friday and he raced it. He actually ran qualifying the heat races in the B main. But then Bobby Pierce ended up driving it in the feature, finishing 17th after starting 28th. Not sure what went on there. And Ross Robinson decided to pack it up after Thursday night's action and wait for the Lucas opener at Golden Isles after he was docked four spots in his heat race for failing the droop rule. On his Facebook page, the team said, quote, any rule where you can check multiple times and get multiple readings is an unenforceable rule that has no place in this sport, unquote. It's interesting to hear that from Robinson, especially after he competed all season last year with Lucas, who did enforce that same rule. There were also nearly 50 other cars at Volusia the two nights who had no problem passing the checks. I don't often understand the reactions that come out of these penalties for these racers, just like when you hear about tire doping. Fans and competitors piss and moan all the time about things not being fair and rules not being enforced. But then when someone does get busted, it's suddenly they're not guilty or the rule is bogus or the lab has fake results or whatever the excuse is. You aren't going to convince me that veteran officials and racers like Kenny Canada and Steve Francis don't know how to enforce these rules. Whether intentional or not, take your penalty and just move on quietly. A uh, quick thanks uh, before we wrap it up. Uh, I want to say thank you to all of our new channel members. We're now at 34 uh, with the addition of Brian, Gordon, Joshua, Nicholas, another Joshua, Don, Justin, Artie, Barry, and Paul. Thank you guys so much for the added support. It is very much appreciated. If you want to check out the membership program, head over to youtube.com slash dirt tracker slash join. There are three shows on today's streaming schedule. Dirt Vision has the iRacing Award of Outlaws and Dirt Vision Now, and there is Flow Racing 24-7. To see the full daily streaming schedule with links to watch, visit dirttracker.com slash watch tonight. All right, that's it for the show today. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We'll be right back here tomorrow for more Dirt Tracker Daily.